one o'clock. Please come in, have a seat. We're going to start. Hello. We are going to get this thing going. How's everybody doing this morning? You guys awake? Mostly? Sometimes, I'm sure this this never happens to you, but to me sometimes you wake up and you're like, man, it was really good when I was sleeping. <laughs> Why did I wake up? <laughs> um, today was one of those mornings, but I finally got up. Had some breakfast, some coffee. So, let's stand up. I want us to get into that position of readiness, ready to go. Sometimes just getting up, changing the way you stand, the way you sit helps. Maybe I should change the way I talk. (laughs) I'm not going to do a long introduction so you guys can go ahead and a minute or two. I just want to read you some lyrics from a song that we're about to sing. You can close your eyes, you can stand there, look up, whatever helps you, but just listen. Listen with your heart. My Jesus, my Savior. If these are not the lyrics, my bad, but I'm sure they'll, <laughs> I'm sure it'll work. Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower, refuge, and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Let us sing power and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i'll love you forever i'll stand for nothing compares to the promise i have in you Jesus. As we're going to sing this song, Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence, your heart, your essence into this midst. Be with us. Worship with us. Sing with us. Inspire us. Comfort us. Guide us. Teach us. Father, we open up our hearts to you. So let's open them, everyone. And let these words come from deep within you as you sing this song, all of these songs. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. so he can restore us so he can love us Jesus we welcome you thank you my Lord for dying on the cross and giving us the privilege to be your sons and your daughters to be your children thank you Jesus we shift our focus on you right now our mind our 
soul and also our body is here to worship you.
Jesus. 
we want to say is just Jesus. Just call upon his name. Just say Jesus. Oh 
keep going. I don't know if you guys have another song, but that's good. As I was standing there, just keep praying, keep listening. I felt the Holy Spirit say that don't be afraid. And then he said, my son, to me, why are you assuming that these people need to be pushed into my presence? Because I was. I was like, what do I do? What do I say? What is it that you want to do? He's like, they're ready. And so am I. There is no pushing needed. Just simply reach out. Just simply take a step. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. Now is that day. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Right now is that moment. And I will be found by you, says the Lord. After I heard that from the Holy Spirit, I just stood there and His presence was evident. It's like you're in the water and you're trying to find this water to drink. But when you stop for a moment and realize you're in the midst of it, He's right there. You don't have to push or pull. Simply open up and step in because he's ready
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for your presence here. Uh, we're not going to stop, so don't, don't think of sitting down just yet. It's been a while since I've prayed for healing, but I feel it on my heart. If it's physical, if it's emotional, if it's something that needs healing and you think you're that person, feel free to come up here. We'll pray with you. And we're going to declare his healing over you. Because that's why his wounds were made on the cross. So that we can be healed. So we can be restored. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. For the voluntary sacrifice that you made. For your bride for humanity that your love was so incredible that you left the heavens and all their glory and came as one of us Jesus I don't know who these people are but I am declaring healing within their bodies in Jesus name let backs be straightened. Let bones be made whole. I'm just getting headaches. Okay. Father, 
We are praying for this man, for these headaches, to leave this man right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for him. We worship you that his body is made whole, that whatever the systems are, that they are put in place. Muscles, vessels, even the cells of his body. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be restored right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I just want to quickly share a testimony. And we're going to continue worshiping and praising. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place like in a mighty way. Come on, can you feel it? Fire of the Holy Spirit is upon this place. On Saturday, on Saturday I was, I was doing some work and I was driving in my car and whatever. And I ended up watching this testimony and, and it was so amazing because it's from my home city in, in Springfield, Massachusetts. And... Um, our friends there, they have a, a baby. I don't know, she's like three years old, I think, or four years old. And she got sick. And this is just absolutely amazing and wild. And when I heard it, I said, Lord, I'm going to share this. And like, all these crazy things start happening when I said that. But basically, uh, this little girl, she got a flu and she was sick. And it turned into meningitis. As some of you heard about it. You know how powerful and crazy that is. She went into, and we know this, we know this family, we know this little girl, and she went to the hospital and she was laying there and she was non-responsive because she had like this bacteria that was eating her brain and she couldn't talk, she couldn't speak. They did a CT scan and half of her brain was like dead. She was just, and the doctors were like, they brought the family back to say goodbyes a few different times and the church started praying for her and then out of nowhere, God came with his powerful spirit and he completely healed and restored her and we're looking at the testimony she came to church this little girl that was just a few days ago just laying there with brain damage non-functioning can't speak can write can't do anything cannot move she was just with all these things in her body you know the, the the medical devices plugged into her just keeping her alive and when the church prayed she was completely restored and renewed and healed just in a few days and like I can I know exactly who these people are and when I heard this I'm like Lord Jesus you are a healer Jesus you are alive and the Holy Spirit said and then it, it was amazing because Holy Spirit said so on Sunday I want you to pray for healing and so when his brother came out, I felt the Holy Spirit just in this place, like so powerfully. Don't, we're, we're not going to be so fast to sit down or, or go to the next part of service. We're going to continue worshiping for a few minutes. And the Holy Spirit said to me that I want to heal people today. I am powerful and Jesus is alive and he's in this place and he wants to heal you today. It doesn't have to be physical healing. It could be emotional. It could be psychological. It could be any type of healing. Maybe you're here and you know of someone and you want to come up on behalf of them with faith, believing that God can heal them wherever they are. We're going to go back into the worship and we're going to continue praying. We're going to praise our Lord, first of all, for this miracle that He did. And He healed this little girl just in a few days while they were praying. The church was praying and she was healed. She was completely restored. Her brain is perfectly normal. That is amazing. He is alive. He is doing this today, Jesus. So we're going to continue praying. We're going to worship. If you, have a he if you need a healing, if you need Holy Spirit to touch you in this place, if you just want the fire of God to touch you in this place, if you want to be able to give the gift of healing and you want to pray for others, you can come up and we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray that the Holy Spirit may touch you. If you need a healing, He will heal you. If you want to be touched today by the fire of God, He will touch you today. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, let's pray. Come on, lift your hands and surrender. Holy Spirit, we believe that you are a healer, Jesus. We believe that you are alive. Come on, worship team. Come on, worship him. 
Jesus, you deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. Don't just look at me. Praise him. Lift your hands, lift your hands and praise him, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You are a healer in this place. If you know someone that needs a healing, you can come up. We'll pray for you on behalf of them. Come on, pray with me. In Jesus' name, don't just stand there. Don't look at me. Just pray. Lift your hands, lift up your mouth and just praise. Give him glory. Tell him he's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. Day and night, he's worthy. He's worthy, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday prayer, but he's worthy every day of the week, every minute of my life. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Holy Spirit, I pray that your fire will just fall this place. Come on, if you can pray in the Spirit, pray with me. Pray with me in tongues if you can pray in the Spirit. Pray, shout out to Him. Shout out to Him and pray in Jesus' name. Come on, He deserves it. All the praise, all the worship. All the praise. You were made to worship Him. You were made to exalt Him. worthy he is worthy of it all he deserves all the praise all the honor in this place come on give it up to Jesus give it up to him he deserves it come on shout Jesus well that was unexpected but very welcomed. <laughs> As we say here, expect the unexpected <laughs> and believe the impossible. Amen. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I really had this impression that someone had a vision or some kind of impression for the church. If, you, if it was just for you, that's fine. You know, you don't need to get up or say anything. So just think about that and, and, and let God convict you. <laughs> so when testimonies come, you're ready to talk about it. Father, thank you so much for these people here, for your presence. It is so easy to be in your presence. It is so good. I just want to thank you, Father, from the bottom of my heart for what you're doing right now and for what you're going to continue to do and for everything you've done. Amen? Once again, everyone said? Amen. Amen. All right, all right. I know we don't want to wrap this up, but we are. So go ahead, take a seat. Yeah, buddy. Welcome back. All right. It's so good to see everybody now. <laughs> when I got up here in the beginning, some people were missing. And I was like, wow, it's amazing. Um, let's go ahead and do, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, kids, we're going to pray for you right now. Jesus, 
Thank you for these kids. Thank you for who they are and the gifts that they are. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kids, go ahead. I'm sure it's not the last time I'm going to forget that. <laughs> go ahead, kiddos. You guys can go to Sunday school. Have fun. Uh, let's go ahead and do offerings and tithes. If you guys want to go ahead and pull that up on the screen. As you guys know, this is an important part of our service. It might be overlooked sometimes, but it is important. That's why there is a generator outside. <laughs> and gas in the generator. You hope? So far, I can hear purring. Don't forget, there is also a box back there if you have cash or checks or bonds or whatever you got. Hey, gold is always going to be gold, right? <laughs> no one's going to say no to gold. All righty. Uh, we have a couple announcements about uh, Easter and this week coming up. Let me see if I remember. Thursday, we're going to have a service here, a communion service at 7 o'clock in the evening, 7 p.m. Thursday here. We're going to have a communion service. And then Sunday, we're going to have one service at 1 p.m. Uh, it's going to be an Easter service. It's going to be combined. We're going to do uh, both, both in one, as they say. Um, did I forget anything? I don't think I did. Any other announcements that I forgot? Maybe you guys remembered? No? No? Okay. All right. Testimonies. Does anybody have any testimonies? Let's go. How's everybody doing? Uh, this might sound kind of weird, but I was yesterday I was working on my truck doing brakes. Uh, yeah, it is a little weird. And uh, I needed to go to the store to grab some parts for the brakes. And I went to O'Reilly's and I didn't have the truck, so I hopped onto the motorcycle, went there, parked my bike, walked into O'Reilly's and a uh, girl was helping me out at the register and uh, doing brake lines and everything. She's like, well, probably need it. And all of a sudden somebody's like, oh man, whose bike is that outside? Billboard just fell on it. <laughs> part of the O'Reilly's <laughs> sign fell. Like the wind was really strong, fell on top of the bike, and like it's like somebody's bike is just laying out there, billboards on top of it, and I look out and I'm like, oh, that's my bike, <laughs> and I'm like, and everybody's like looking at me like, and I'm like, and first thing that came to mind, I start smiling, I don't know why, and then I'm like, you know, praise God that I'm not under it, and then she's like, so what do you want to do? Do you want to like go check on the bike or you want to do the lines, like the brake stuff? And I'm like yeah, let's finish checking out and stuff. And so she's pointing on things and I'm like, yeah, I need that. I need that, that as well. Okay, got that taken care of. And then I look outside and I'm like, like, you know, and then I don't know, I had this like overwhelming peace. So I was just like, I wasn't Raza Chirovne, like I wasn't upset or anything. I was just, I was just super happy. And then obviously I sat there, waited for the police to come, did a little report or whatever, but bike's all good, a couple little damages, but like they say, everything's gonna burn, so. <laughs> It's okay. But either way, I was just thinking if that billboard, if I was under there maybe a minute, if I didn't step in the store a minute earlier or late, later, that billboard could have uh, whacked me on top of the head. I don't know if I would be standing here today, but either way, praise God, I'm alive in here. So might be a little weird, but I wanted to share that with you guys. We like weird. Weird is good. Miracles are weird, by definition. That's awesome. That's amazing. Anyone else? Man, I had something to share. And I've been trying to remember for the past half hour. I can't remember. Some kind of testimony. I have so many. But, um, yeah, let's...
I can't see Tim. Is Tim here? No? We were driving out with the slab on the forklift. We have this big old clamp. This happened Wednesday. And it was like a, it was a pretty large piece. I don't know, a couple hundred pounds. And usually guys on the forklift were backing out the shop and one guy's just holding it, you know, controlling it. And there's like this little bump and you got to go slow over it. So he's going slow over it, slow over it. And there's like a, like a fracture in the granite, in the marble. And he's going and kind of goes down on the bump and it kind of like just slightly, I guess, puts some pressure on it. And I'm holding on it and I'm kind of looking to the side. And all of a sudden I just feel it falling. And like your feet are under there and the thing can just, and I don't know, grace of God, he gave me, I don't know, some reaction. I jumped away real quick, but it just barely, barely missed my feet. And it was just, and again, I don't know, we, I don't know why we're like, yeah like a piece of marble it's expensive broken fell and me and Tim were just looking at each other he's smiling I'm laughing and I'm just I don't know why everything's okay it just barely missed us we're looking at it and then we just grab the broom clean it up and I'm just sitting there I'm like I could have been I could have been at home right now I could have been at the hospital somebody could be putting my toes and like like carrots into a little Ziploc bag you know I don't know anything could be and I'm just I don't know the grace of God is over us and I just one more testimony so praise God are you sure no more <laughs> no we we're just messing with you that's amazing dude don't don't stop keep them coming seriously as I said keep them coming Amen. I, I just wanted I wanted to tell you that when he said maybe somebody has something for the church, you know, I came through the door and I've been concentrating on the names of God. And when I came through the door, I hear in my spirit that he is a restorer. And then I said, Lord, and I, as I was over there praying, he said, what the canker worm, the palmer worm has stolen from you to follow him. He's restoring, and he's doing that for me. And then as I sat there, and I thought, that's for me. I'm going to write that down as soon as I leave. And then when he said it, maybe for the church. So if, if you're here and the things that you have left behind for the cause of Christ, I was like, wow. You know, he's the restorer, and he's doing that for me. And I just thank God for it, and I know that he's doing that for you. So if that ministers to you, that, that's what the Lord said to me. As soon as I came through, because we were running a little bit late, and the music already started, and I said, he said, I am the restorer. And I was just like, wow, God is so good. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Here we go. Okay, so this isn't even like a testimony. Well, it kind of is, but it isn't. I just want to encourage you guys to keep praying for the teens, especially our teen girls. They are so hungry. They Today during um, class, our topic was sacrifice and how sacrifice is a form of worship. And, oh, God, it was so good. But it kept transitioning to different topics. The girls would not stop asking questions. They are like, what is, like, the Trinity? How is God Jesus and Holy Spirit, how are they the same person? So our teens are so hungry for the gospel, for Jesus, for a deeper revelation. So please do not pr stop praying for the teens. Pray right now? Okay. <laughs> Holy Spirit, Father, we ask you to bless the teens, that you will fulfill that hunger, that that hunger will never go dry. Holy Spirit, that you deepen that hunger, that that hunger that they have, they will have it every single day, that they will hunger and they will thirst for you, and they will go looking for you. And when they read the scripture, that you will fulfill them, that you will open their eyes to who you are and what you want for their life. Holy Spirit, we speak life into them, and we speak deeper revelation in the name of Jesus amen definitely a testimony who can change a person's heart even God can't make us do things he can only you know nudge us ask us and plead with us no that's incredible that hunger is amazing it's awesome it's awesome Amen. Amen. Praise God. That uh, that the fire was put out and nothing happened to them, right? The, to their house, nothing was harmed or anything. Yeah, I called my parents this morning. My mom, my mom is a jokester. 
She's like, yeah, we made it out fine. And then it breaks up. <laughs> and I'm like, hello? Hello? I'm like, mom, stop joking. Tell me how it is. Then we can joke afterwards. I get that from her, so I understand. But <laughs> seriously, it's like one of the worst times to joke. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Harasho, as they say. Harasho. Okay, you guys ready? Because we're just getting started. All right, please welcome Pastor. <laughs> Your own home, uh, I don't feel we're done praying. Um, we need to pray for Peter. And we need to pray for everyone in this room. If you've been under attack and you could have lost your life, there is a reason why you're alive. <laughs> I remember before service when I was two, I almost died. And here I am serving God. So that means uh, if Satan is attacking you, that means that you have greater calling on your life, Father, in the name of Jesus. I was one of those that's supposed to die when I was two, but here I am standing and serving you, Father. And that anointing that you put on people that have been under attack recently or whenever in their lives, especially little kids, Father, because that's how Satan always worked. He attacked Jesus, but Jesus was not there when 14,000 kids were killed. He attacked Moses, but wasn't <laughs> God kept him alive. So in the name of Jesus, let this revelation to sink in, Father, into everyone's life, Father. If they've been kept alive, Father, that's your calling on their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Wow. So how many of you experienced God today? Let me see your hands. Can you give your hands? Look around. You know how real that is? You know it was a dream. The church service would be place where people can come in and just experience God. And now we're a living testimony to that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for moving among us, Father. I don't believe we did anything. Just your grace. <laughs> Father, I thank you for every single person in this place that we're just seeing you and we're responding to you, Father. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I guess it would be easier to preach today. <laughs> uh, something that I learned from deliverance ministry. One time I was praying for someone. And de demon manifested. Um, you know what happens to people when they possessed, oppressed, whatever. It does, doesn't really matter, but demons still out there. Um, thinking and pondering on that, I, I, I guess I just got the revelation. If demon can use someone else's body and manifest and show through them talk through them, show emotions, anger, and all of those other scream. How is it possible if I'm a Christian and God can do the same thing through me? Jesus can use my body. He can use your body and do the same thing demons are doing. It's just in a good way. Wow. Can you imagine if we just, just forget about religion for a second and literally start living with that mindset? I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. I am a temple of God. My spirit is one with the Holy Spirit. And now I'm letting my body 
my body, my soul, my emotions, my memories, my mind. I'm letting Holy Spirit to use it so he can manifest through me at any time as he wishes. What would be impossible or possible? I'm pretty sure if I would ask many of you, you would have those moments. So keep on striving. Paul put it in, and when I was praying in the beginning of the year about vision for this church, how does it look like? It looks like this. Paul said, I'm striving to get hold of Jesus in the same way he got hold of me. You know, that, that, that's what's really happening. You know why you're coming here? You know why you're praying? Do you know why you worship God and God is touching you? That is God's way to get hold of you. And that word got hold, it means violently grab something and try to rip it off so it belongs to you right now. <laughs> Just think about that. How much would our Christianity change if we just start striving, get hold of Jesus. In the same way, if we just relax, like Adolf was saying, and we we'll let Jesus to get hold of us. You know, each practice, each time worship band is here. I know that's what you guys are doing, right? Each time Adolf comes up, that's what you're trying to do. Each time Mike is here, has a mic in his hand. <laughs> this sounds very interesting. Mike has a mic. <laughs> Each time he prays, you know what we're doing? We're trying to tell you, it's real. It's real. Sometimes you, you go and pursue it. You pray, you fast, you read, you push yourself. But sometimes it's God pursuing you. And all you have to do, just relax and let it happen. It's just amazing. Now, I'm not sure how all of this is going to go with the sermon. But I have a little testimony. I like fishing. A week ago, on Friday I went, I was fishing at the lake. Then on Saturday we went fishing. So I'm staying at the lake house alone. I went and bought this beautiful Bible, because I kind of realize digital is good, but sometimes it runs out of juice. <laughs> I, I, I literally took it as a revelation. You know, this paperback Bible never runs out of juice. Battery never dies. You know, I, I'm just giving you revelation. <laughs> Something to remember, you know, like you want to check something, internet goes off, your phone dies, something happens. This thing never dies. So I have this anxious on my heart, go buy the Bible, go buy the Bible. So I go to Walmart and I buy a Bible. And then, I don't know why, I just open chapter 14, Acts, open up with me. I'm just going to share something that I believe... I mean, it impacted me. I hope it's going to impact you. It happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews. And so spoke that the great multitude, both Jews and Greeks, believed. So I believe it was Paul and whoever was with them. They went to synagogue and they spoke. Okay. And here's verse 2 where God really spoke to me about. I, I just saw in this verse something that i never seen before. But I believe it's very, very important. Matter of the fact, it was brand new Bible. I started randomly reading Book of Acts. I don't know why. But when I read this verse, you know what happens sometimes? You read something. And then you feel something is there, and you read it again, and you read it again, and then God starts speaking to you about that. So it's one of those. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. We can read the rest of the story. Basically, crowd split, some hated Paul, some were for him, some listened to the gospel, some didn't. But 
something that I saw in this verse that I never seen before, and that is this. There was some religious people that had their ambitions, desires, jealousy against what God was doing through the man of God, and they started speaking gossips, and Bible calls that poison. And as I read that, I just wondered, I wonder how many, and this is the part where when you get close to Jesus, and I'm working on this personally, it's not only you get emotional when you praise Jesus and get close to him, but this is the part where Jesus can use your mind and your emotions to let you know what he feels at that moment. Um, you know, Jesus came out, he looked at the crowds, and the Bible says he had compassion. It's love and mercy kind of deal. People without shepherd, this person is blind, this person needs that. And compassion, love, that's what moved people. So Jesus, Jesus wants to spread his gospel. God is willing to do whatever he wants to do. There is a ministers that are so filled with the Holy Spirit that God can do anything through them. But there is this one group of people that just start spreading lies to the people that generally open to the gospel. And because of their lies, the way they speak it, it poisons the minds of the people. And the group basically split. It's a very powerful passage. Because everything, everything was set up to, to success. God was there. It was God's will. The ministers were there. They were in good condition. So God could move through them. But then Satan did something that I believe he does it until now. He's using people that not where they need to be. And basically, right now in modern terms, we would call it gossip. One thing that these people did that stopped the mighty move of God is gossip. It's just that powerful. I don't think Satan changed, do you? I don't believe so either. I think if Satan has a plan against you and you spend your time with God, you've been praying, you've been seeking God, you've been open up. You know, one of the most surest ways he either used on you or he's going to use in your life, he's going to use a gossip to stop you. You might say, oh, it's not spiritual, I'm so spiritual, and all of that. There is an example. It just happens all the time. And then I was praying and thinking about it, and I asked God, There is people in church right now, in this service, in any church, so let's not be specific, that listen to the gossips that were inspired by hell and their souls were impacted by it. Can you imagine? Bible calls it poison. Literally, that word means rotten root. It means that, um, I'll read more scriptures. I hope I'm going to get to it. It means it goes through your ears, into your mind, impacts your soul to the point where it goes so deep that whatever your faith, 
whatever your belief system is based on, it impacts that and it just starts rotting them from inside out. And you can motivate those people. You can say, come on, let's worship Jesus. Let's go evangelize. Let's pray for this or that. Let, let's do that. But people can't because of the gossip and not doing anything about it. Now it's like a poison that got injected through your veins or cobra or something bites you. And now it's working inside of you. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I want to cry. Honestly, I do. Because I believe a lot of those words that were so poisonous, a lot of you, you listen to it, you absorbed it, it's inside of you, inside of your mind, you think about it, and then you wonder, what did happen to me? Did I sin? What have I done? You just can't pull yourself together. You're praying and it just doesn't go. You read Bible and God doesn't speak. You want to serve God, but there is no desire. All of those things, they are indications of the problem that your soul been poisoned. I can tell you everything is fine, Jesus on the throne, God is good, and all of that. And you might say, Amen, and you leave this place and nothing's going to change. But I'm trying to love you enough to tell you, if you listen to gossip, if you spread in gossip, either one of those is killing you. It's Satan devised this thing, gossip, in such a way where no matter who is the party to it, it's going to impact and kill every single person along the way. I want you to follow me. The person that comes up with the gossip, first of all, it's all based on lie. It's never based on truth. People think that they say the truth. They cannot know all the truth. God doesn't work that way. Jesus is truth. There is no Jesus in this. There is no God in this. So it might be mostly be true, but there is lie in it. So if the person starts saying it as a lie, it's like drinking poison at that point. So it's going to start impacting them. Because by the way, by the definition, gossip is the very tool or instrument that Satan is using. Anyone who gossips, they turn into the instrument of destruction. It's just they let in that poison run through, run through their veins. They saying, oh, I'm not impacted. I'm just saying this and that. But you let poison to run through your mind, through your emotions, you will get impacted. Then you tell it someone. Now that person, if they didn't stop you, now they listen to that poison. It comes into their mind, through their ears. People think about it. Over the time, they're going to start feeling about it. It destroys that person. But now there's third party. Is the person that gossip is about. It impacts them too. A long time ago, I read a little illustration. So there was this lady in the church, and she liked to gossip. And she said a lie about pastor one time. But then God touched her. She felt compelled. She came to the pastor and said, Pastor, forgive me. He said, let me teach you a lesson. It was in London, I believe. So he took her in the middle of the big square. It was very windy day, kind of like we had yesterday when the trees knocked out some power. So, and he took a pillow full of little fluffy feathers. And he said, watch this. He opens up the pillow and lets all the feathers out. 
and the wind blows like miles. And he says, now go and pick it up. She says, I can't. He said, I want you to understand what you've done to me. You let one lie out, which was spread out. And I will probably never get my reputation back. It's, I'm getting very compassionate about this because I know it's a killer number one in the church. It doesn't look like sin. It doesn't smell like sin. It's, oh, I'm so curious. I'm just going to say what I heard from someone. We don't even think about it. And yet it's a killer number one in the church. It's, it's very powerful. I tried to read it in Russian (laughs) Bible. The way they translate it, you can't even guess that verse is translated that way. So, I don't know. There is something about Russian people. (laughs) They think it's normal, I guess. You you don't trust me. You read that Sil Natalny Perevod. You'll see. I, I, I mean, out of curiosity, those of you that speak two languages, let me read it to you, and, and you guess this meaning out of it. А неверующие в Иудеи возбудили и раздражали против братьев сердца язычников. It's not even close. It just, yeah, I don't know. It just makes no sense. Proverbs twenty nineteen. He who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with gospel. With gossip. (laughs) I'm speaking fallacy here. Gossip is not gospel. Just just say amen, sir. I want to make sure you heard me. Uh, Man. That word slanderer, it's basically a gossiper. It's a person that says gossips. Literally, uh, I'm going to say it to the best of my ability, but literal translation for that is scandal monger. Did I say it right? Uh, I didn't know who scandal monger is, so I looked it up. It's a good thing about me. If I don't know something, I always look it up. It's a person, by definition, who stirs up public outrage towards someone or their actions by spreading rumors and malicious gossip. Gossip only has one and only one purpose. To kill something. To stir something up. To get your emotions raging. To get your emotions out of balance, out of control. People not knowing the truth but believing in gospels, they become so emotional and so involved. And many times, many times I've seen it through the ministry. Sometimes people start hating other people or leader, or parents, or friends, without even talking to them. Because they believed in gossips. You know what gossip is? I I love this quote I found. It's a misuse, gossip is evil misuse of our ability to bring life to someone. Because you can use same mouth, you can use same mouth, you can say words, because that's what we do. But if instead of truth, you're saying lies, which gossip is, you're bringing death instead of life. You know why people say gossips? Unfortunately, but this is what it is. Because they heard it from someone or they made it up. 
And when gospel works, uh, gospel, I have to repent, gossip works in your mind, <laughs> it makes you angry. So the reason why someone is so anxious to tell you this gossip, because they looking for the outlet to vent. It's destroying them from inside. Their emotions raging, and they can't handle it anymore. So they're just looking for empty ears, I guess, to say that. Ephesians 4, 14 and 15, chapter 4. It says, no longer be children. And then it says, speak in truth in love. I read this verse. It's very powerful. Did you know you can only speak truth in love? It's a revelation in itself. You never be able to speak gossip in love. <laughs> it never works that way. Oh, I love that person, but he's doing this and that. Wrong. You, you're not reading the right gospel. You can only speak truth in love. Real quickly, book of Proverbs, powerful, powerful words. Chapter 26, I'm going to read verse 20 and a couple verses after that. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. Amen? So where there is no telebearer, that's New King James, or the gossiper, basically, strife ceases. Can you imagine how many marriages can be saved? <laughs> because strife literally means fight. So each time you have a fight between the friends, in a family, in a church, at work, whatever, you know where the root of that goes. It comes from gossip. Because the minute someone starts spreading the gossip, the fight ceases. So that's that powerful. But I want you to look later in verses. The words, okay? So it's very important to understand. The words that tell a bear, I like what? What, what your Bible says. Yeah, tasty truffles. I looked it up because it made no sense. It means bit greedily swallowed. It's like tasty food that is so delicious that you just eat it like that. Man, not only did Satan design this way, not but the way it works, the, the reason why the rumors go around, it's just like a person, when they hear the rumor, they swallow every single word. It's just like the most delicious stuff. It's not you, I know. And they go down into the inmost body. You know what that literally means? It means your belly. It means also the seat of your passions. I want you to picture this. It's like this delicious food. It's just like Eve is looking at the fruit that Satan is saying, it's going to make you do this and this. And Eve just, ah, I really want it does not realize it, what it's going to do to her. When you listen to gossip, it's itching your ears. Oh, I want to know what that person did, what that leader did, what my relatives or whoever. I want to know. But the moment the word enters your mind, it goes 
down so deep, and it starts killing anything, anything. I literally mean anything and everything of the Holy Spirit. You know that scripture where out of your belly, the living water should flow? And Jesus said that about Holy Spirit. The moment you listen to gossip, it kills the source. I have a few things to say. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. It's a very serious matter. It's very, very serious. I wanted to call this sermon as a detoxing. <laughs> detoxing your mind and your soul. I still feel, feel like God wants to do that. Right now, when we're in presence of God, most of you, you raised your hands and you said, God is here. I believe God is here. But I also believe the reason why God is touching your heart. Because I feel like God is crying over many of us. Because we've been part of the gossip. Part of the rumors. We let our bodies to be used by Satan as a tool of destruction. And it's hurting you right now. It's hurting you right now. You can pull yourself together. You can accept any authority. You can trust anyone. You, you just constantly hurt. And because of that, you constantly mad and Everything is wrong around you. And you're blaming everyone and everything. But Jesus is standing by you and saying, I'm here. I'm here to heal your soul. For some of you, because you spread the gossip, you need to repent. For some of you, you receive the gossip. You need to repent. Just say, Jesus. I just didn't know. I didn't know how destructive this thing is. Please forgive me right now. Cleanse my soul of any gossip, of any death that it brought. In the name of Jesus. I was sitting one time in service. And my mind was thinking about this one person. And because I was thinking about it, my, my, my emotions were out of check. I knew I was in the house of the Lord, but I couldn't tame my own emotions. And it just going and going and going. And you get desperate at that point And you say, God, just help me because I understand everything, but I can't stop it. Some of you, you are in this position. Because of what was said, of what you thought about that person, you need to forgive. Forgive right now. Forgive. Let it go. Whatever person did to you, whatever you heard that person did, it's not righteousness. It's not your curiosity. It's the vehicle that Satan is riding through your emotions right now. Forgive everyone that needs to be forgiven right now. Detox your soul. Detox your soul right now. Holy Spirit, go real deep. Go to the sources. Go to those valleys. Go to the seat of the passions of everyone in this room, Father. If there is anything that came from Satan in the form of gossip and we're just raging inside, in the name of Jesus, remove those roots. In the name of Jesus, destroy of the strongholds that Satan been building inside of us, inside of our mindsets. In the name of Jesus, Father, set captives free so your church will be free to flow in the Holy Spirit, not demonic spirits. In the name of Jesus, Father, bless all of us. And even more, Father, as I'm sharing this truth from the gospel, 
equip everyone in this room. So when they leave this place, they will be equipped to, to this garbage detector, garbage of the gossip. And they're going to stop any gossip, Father, in the name of Jesus. So no one will be hurt anymore, Father. So we will know the truth and this truth will set us free in this area. In the name of Jesus, Father, make your church powerful. We're all parts of the same body. We can't exist without each other. We need each other, Father. And we just help each other. We're not gossiping and poisoning each other. Father, just stop it, stop it, stop it in the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, let your power mightily move inside of us. Father, I declare freedom in this place, Father. I declare that we will be, our body members will be instruments of righteousness. Hallelujah, Father. I thank you for the spiritual word that just happened. And you're the champion, Jesus. And you're going to move through us and use our words to spread the gospel. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. You're amazing people. Thank you so much for coming. Praise God. Now I want you to get up. Find one person that didn't come with you in the car. And show them some love. Spread the love, not rumors. <laughs> <laughs>